ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ಪರಂ ಸುಖದ ಕೇವಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ದ್ವಂದ್ವಾತೀತ ಗಗನ ಸದೃಶ ತತ್ವಮಸ್ಯಾಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಏಕಮಲಮಚಲ ಸರ್ವಧೀ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿತ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ ಓಡೇಶನ್ ಸು ಸದ್ಗುರು ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ದಿ ಗಿವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಬ್ಲಿಸ್ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಯೋರ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಒನ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಎ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ವಾಸ್ಟ್ ಎಸ್ ದಿ ಈಥರ್ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ ಇಟರ್ನಲ್ beyond the three gunas and their modifications the supreme preceptor yoga vashishtha upsham prakarana section 36 prahlad continues to offer adorations to lord lord in this context is lord vishnu hari sustainer of the universe and the prahlad is ideal devotee of god so the prahlad episode you are be going to be given insight into the role of bhakti and jnana leading to enlightenment prahlad is bhakti but at the same time prahlad of yoga vashishtha is absolute gyani now you hear in the words of prahlad himself oh my soul you have discovered your essential nature having attained enlightenment in a very allegorical way you are expressing a special joy you are congratulating your soul as if you are a different person congratulations oh my soul <laughs> you have discovered your essential nature how long you have been wandering you have given up pride anger hate crookedness you have become the self good news <laughs> you have not been just confined to the body you are the self underlying all that exists and all that exists is only maya you can always congratulate the desert <laughs> for being free from mirage how can you how can you ever fall under the sphere of guna sounds like a wonder remember again and again the humiliated state that you brought upon yourself through ignorance scolding a little <laughs> and implying that now it will not happen again as long as your knowledge is not in the level of enlightenment you may go on to better condition better birth but ignorance continues that therefore allow your mind to have repeated affirm understanding 
One day you have said, understood, all is illusion. That's not enough. Every day, before you take your breakfast. <laughs> I'm joking, but... <laughs> Your mind has to again and again come to that type of affirmation again and again and again. Why should you do that? To remember all the humiliated states you have suffered from. If you are not tired of that, don't repeat it. Therefore, Full attention to how can I attain liberation. Shakti, Bhakti, Mukti. How to gain a strength to stay on the path. How to develop devotion to God, make the life's movement saras. Because now you are working in love of God. Even in ordinary love, you Life becomes a little saras. And when you are in that process, discovering the amazing possibility within your own personality, then gunas can't trick you. <laughs> Mantra is there that doesn't like Rama's coronation. The gunas play that part. Gunas are sattva, rajas, tamas. But gunas, if they are not well aligned, that's the type of gunas that restrict your spiritual movement. Well aligned means if the gunas don't stay straight, tamas being sublimated into rajas, and rajas sublimating itself into sattva. If that, then mantra is no longer the hunchbacked, she will become a standing up, saraswati. But as long as the gunas are playing the stage of trickery. Tamas is creating tamas, inertia. Rajas is creating amazing distractions in your mind. And sattva is creating the illusion that you can gain happiness in the world, leading your mind to bhoga, enjoyment. The same prakriti now is working in a deceitful manner. So your soul will go on, prakriti will go on giving you body after body. So therefore remember that in the corner of your mind. Now having inquired into the nature of your essential self, having taken recourse to the quest of who am I, he's, he's talking to the soul, congratulating it, that you soul, you have done all this. May you laugh at the ways of the world, but don't go into the past memories with a self-shopping mind. Go to the past memories with a laughter. It's like you get out of a troubled dream, and if you are healthy, you don't stay troubled. You begin to smile. That was only a, only a dream. I ate tons of cream. <laughs> That it was only a dream. <laughs> Those evil days have passed, wherein you have been tortured by worries and anxieties. All this. You, you are being 
give an insight into the state of liberation contrasted from all you have experienced in this life and countless lives. All the days that you have passed through, all the days, how many days we have passed through, that you can't imagine. But if your mind thinks only of this embodiment, that's enough for the mind to, to have spiritual food for thought. How many times you have been tortured by worries and anxieties? But now, you abide in the body even as an emperor. Not ordinary emperor. One whose desires are ever fulfilled. That's the state of enlightenment. If you are not enlightened, you are constantly, you are embodied, but within your body personality, you are constantly tortured. Worries and anxieties, countless, I don't go into that detail. As if your soul is, can be easily grabbed and grasped. Now you cannot be grasped by the miseries of the world. Previously, miseries, when you are not enlightened, every little misery gave you a good slap. <laughs> and you suffered from injury. But now, all the miseries of the world drift like clouds and you are the sky. Can the clouds slap the sky? And keep and create a scar? You don't believe me, look at the sky. <laughs> so that is the reality that the healthy, spiritually healthy state of, of life. You live with that understanding. Because that is the truth. Everything that you are experiencing through your limited mind, through your limited senses, and through your delusional ego, all that you are experiencing is a kind of a dream. And you can't ac accomplish anything in a dream. So instead of securing your attainment in the world of dream, which is wrong, try to discover. You don't have to secure it. You are in reality. Who am I? Go into the source and discover I am Brahman. I am Satchidananda. You have vanquished the elephant of mind. It refers to the vasanas of the mind. The subtle desires existing in your mind. Move. Vasana-led energy moves like elephant moving, very gracefully. But elephant coming into your garden, <laughs> now, <laughs> tremendous chaos. So the vasana in the beginning, as it emerges from the subconscious, it's so soft, but the gate is meaningful, it's a strength very soft, soothing vasana comes. But its effect on your daily life is tremendous. Both ways, positive or negative. And here we are after negative vasanas. Negative vasanas 
bring about distractions in your mind. You have overpowered the wicked horses. Horses are your conscious mind and senses. And vasanas, malin vasanas, impure vasanas, make these horses dusht, wicked horses. Instead of taking you a nice ride in the world, world which is heavenly, God godly, instead of leading you in that type of world, these horses lead you into durdasha, into situations that degrade your your personality. You have defeated the enemies in the form of sense objects. Once you have mastered, once you have experienced rasa of divine love, when the bhakti has entered your heart and a little delight of that love so great that once you have tasted it, your mind will not go after. Vishayaras. Vishayaras is pleasures, eat, drink, be merry. This doesn't mean that when you move towards enlightenment, you neither will eat, nor will drink, nor <laughs> you will have any happiness. It doesn't mean that. <laughs> But your goal is not in that level. Once you deep down you have developed a clear understanding, you don't want to be born again. When that understanding has developed, you are not going to be trapped by sense objects. Vishaya Vasana is Shurpanaka in the Ramayana, the demoness who comes to Rama Lakshmana who were in the forest and Sita was also there and tells Rama, I have never seen person so handsome like you and good news, I am the handsome, most beautiful <laughs> person in the whole world. But she's an ugly monster. <laughs> Puts the disguise. <laughs> a demoniac magic. appears <laughs> very yeah. handsome. Beautiful. So that's similar. That Vishaya Vasana. What did Lakshmana do? Chopped up her nose and also ears. <laughs> so, towards objects of pleasure, your ears are not always looking for someone to tell what are the things selling in the market, especially laddus and pakoras, <laughs> jilet. <laughs> I'm joking, but the idea is Human ears are so involved with unnecessary things, lots of news. So no meaning at all. Firstly, the news themselves have no in-depth character. And yet those news go on breaking, go on changing, and your mind is constantly working. Again, Good to understand, if you have nothing better to do, that it <laughs> keeps the mind exercised. <laughs> but you will be wiser if you have your ears and your nose, nose smells. It's a subtle touch of 
you know it without even going through sense perceptions. Satsanga should become tuned to your nose. And all things that bring out, give to your mind the message, the glory of God. So your ears become open up to the, in a simple way of saying, all things, bhajans, kirtans, songs that inspire you, talks that lead your mind to higher level, and even the birds and animals and trees, all that should become through your sensitive ear, they must bring glory of God. Then Shurpradaka in you has been well treated. <laughs> Nose has been chopped off, ears have been cut off. And your soul is waiting for ultimate goal. Destruction of ignorance, that's your Ravana, that's in Maha Ramayana. O oh Lord, you lie dormant in the ignorant, and when slightly awakened, you become the basis of worldly enjoyments. Now, the stages, people who are completely dull with mandamati, They go after perver perversions, simple perversion, going after the drink and getting addicted to smoking, drinking and drugs and so forth. Another addiction, terroristic philosophy. Heroism lies in how much they can hurt others, the demoniac mind. So, the same consciousness, which is God, Brahman, becomes this basis and source of demoniac tendencies. Now, if you evolve a little, now the same source, you are no longer demoniac. But now, your mind is doing good things for benefit. Because good things will give you more prosperity, the more fulfillment of three asanas, Putreshana, a <coughs> lot of good progeny, lot of recognition, location, lot of wealth. So therefore, same God now, same Lakshmi, will give you Daivi Sampat. Now she is giving you worldly Sampat. That stage. Now, if you continue to have a right movement, Sanamarg, then God will not allow you to stay happy with worldly enjoyment. God will play trickery. And so, as you evolve, you begin to develop by ragya and go after divine delight. 
the light coming out of seeing your ang anger sublimated, your burden of your ego lightened by humility, seeing that all the worries that you hold is being handled by the divine train. You don't have to carry it on your head, put it right on the side. <laughs> And you don't need anything. Essentially, you are one with God. Essentially, you are Brahman. And all the enjoyments, you become the work. It is you who drink the honey, gathered by the bees of the senses. All the that you are experiencing, pleasure, etc. Your mind is led by the Vedantic question, who is the enjoyer? And your bhakti, devotion to God has opened. God comes, calms your head, says, I, I am the enjoyer. <laughs> Now, what happens if that type of vision enters? All this Prahlad is bringing out in Yoga Vashishtha, artistically, Valmiki is giving this teaching in the form of dialogue between Prahlad and his own soul. You don't take it literally because nobody recorded it. <laughs> 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 the very purpose is to bring the spiritual seekers to become aware of the goal and how to reach the goal. So behind all these stories, that's the central point. Continuing his dialogue with his soul, Prasad says, you are the fragrance in the flower of the body. Firstly, now, first he scolded the body that gave lots of problems. Now, another way. Deho devalayo prokto. Look at your body not as your residence, the residence of God. And it is devalaya, temple. So you are the fragrance in the flower of the body. You are the nectar that abides in the orb of the body. Your whole body is like the moon. Not only your head is moon-like. And God is the one who is radiating nectar from the moon of your personality. Just as sap permeates the trunk, branches and leaves of a tree, in the same manner you permeate the body. The entire body being the temple of God. Where is his shrine? Where is he located? God is from toes to the head. The entire body is permeated by God. You referring to God. Prahlad is talking to the soul. Soul has become enlightened. Now this, when he using you term, he is using it with that understanding, that revelation, that soul is essentially Brahman. But the previous slight memory called a avidya lesh, a little stress, is making him separate himself, as it were, from the soul that has attained enlightenment, his own soul. This separation has been done so that you can hear the dialogue. <laughs> mm. 
Now, to understand that point, think of yourself experiencing a dream in a dream world. In the dream world, you are seated on a chair and your body is complaining. And you find your body hit by a car. Your legs are aching, your arms are aching, aching and whole body. But higher news, you are lying on the bed. You have nothing, you are completely free. And you are the one permeating everything of your dream. Not only your body with injury and whatever, but you are permeating the whole world of your dream. In your dream, you are looking at the sky. Where is that sky? Your own consciousness. You are looking at things. You are looking at past, present and future. Entire world of your dream is permeated by your own consciousness. Use the same understanding. The entire world you are experiencing and all the history you read and all the geography you read and astronomy you read, all is being done through your brain and nervous system, the iPad. And behind the iPad, all the source energy that works through the iPad, the real I am, that's absolutely, that's Brahman. And all the iPads may play different dramas. Brahman remains exactly the same. And no matter how much you may become deluded by the iPad, means instead of realizing I am Brahman, you stay with egoism. I am body, I am mind, I am intellect. These things belong to me. If you continue that, no matter how much you do, the reality in you remains intact. And you, you have to ultimately realize who am I. And all that you are experiencing is maya, illusion. Brahma Satyam Jagana Mitya. This being so, that Brahman must be brought into your heart as source of infinite love. You should not allow your mind to have a mathematical approach to Brahman to begin with. Begin with and end with is with your heart. Mathematical precision is intellectual knowledge. You study scriptures, in the beginning it is intellectual. The intellectual knowledge must help your heart to develop more love of God. It takes you away from bhakti then your knowledge of scriptures is very poor and perverted. That's, that's what Prahlad's story is going to bring, that's bringing it, that's the highlight. In the name of wisdom, if your personality begins to lose softness of the heart, goodness of the heart, generosity, charity, joyousness, if your heart loses, you are not going to be really liberated. <laughs> Intellectually you may become very conceited, but liberation will not be possible. It is only in, a, in the state of absolute joyous love that ego dies. 
egoism moves away and your ego disappears. Be behind the ego there is absolute self, aham brahm. First egoism moves away, you live with sattvic ego that does not obstruct the view of God. And when your karma for the body is over, even that ego simply dissolves. There is nothing but absolute I am, aham brahm. He doesn't say that, aham brahma, brahma, brahma alone is. Without you, O oh beloved self, the world will become the world becomes essenceless. Take from your dream world, take yourself out of the dream world. What happens to the dream world? You are the one giving reality to all, all the dream world, which doesn't exist. Brahman is the one that is giving reality to all this world. Screen is the one that gives reality to all projected images. If the screen itself moves away, what will the projections do? So, subtle point to understand that every moment in your life you are experiencing something. Ego-based you is shaken by those experiences, shaken positively or negatively. But the real you, Brahman, is behind every experience, no matter how time, negative or positive. behind, no matter what you have been dreaming, even the roach of your dream is you. And the mountain in your dream is you. The mind is suffering from misery, sorrow, over something. But all that energy is Brahman. And same mind that is experiencing immense power and glory is also the same Brahman. Brahman is the reality, not just for big mountains, but for every little thing. All that you experience, every cell in your body, every breath that you breathe, all is Behind all there is Brahman. But this realization needs your sadhana. But the understanding of this is a very important point that creates a focus where you have to go. When you shine in the function of pure intellect, the darkness of ignorance is dispelled. This is the technique of attaining enlightenment. Allowing your buddhi to become pure. And that's done by your integral yoga practice. Just as a shining sun removes frost and mist, whole night you shiver and frightened by mist and darkness, the sun rises, this is allegorical. 
then all this moves away. Enlightenment is like a rising sun. If the world were not sustained by you, all human realities would become as ridiculous as a wreath of lightning flashes. Instead of making mala out of flowers, <laughs> if you have demoniac fingers and want to catch lightning flashes and make a wreath. That will be a ridiculous job. If God is not behind this creation, this uh, intending to point to those who believe that it's, how can God exist? God doesn't exist. It's just nature has created all that. <laughs> if you do that, <laughs> must understand it's as ridiculous as a wreath of lightning flashes. But sustained by you, God, the Atma, he's talking to his enlightened soul, the objects appear to be of value and significance to the soul. Every little thing that you handle becomes a puja. If you are doing worship, candle becomes important, matchstick becomes important, incense becomes important, prayers become important. What gives importance to all this? God. In simple way to understand, that behind your life and your dealing with the world, the purpose is realization of Brahman. If this purpose is not there in your life, you are living in a ridiculous man. You know that you cannot really secure anything, but it doesn't bother you. <laughs> Until the time comes at 80, 90, and then you don't know how to, how to handle it. One should wake up. And that's the message behind it. <laughs> Make your life spiritually enriching. That enrichment will allow you to have profounder feeling profounder type of happiness and will experience a revelation of amazing potentiality within yourself. And what's more amazing, you will not call it my attainment. You will say, God, I'm a channel in the hands. You who fill the entire universe, adorations to you. Another, your adoration does not stay limited to a temple. Temple adoration is kindergarten method of remembering God, connecting with God. I'm not giving the message that you shouldn't go into the temple. <laughs> message is don't simply and think that only in the temple you can get the opportunity for your doing devotional act. The revelation, grow up. See, you who fill the entire universe. Adorations to you, O beloved self, the embodiment of peace. Adorations to you. You are beyond the mind and senses. Adorations to you. Glory to you. 
विक्ट्री टू यू जय हो एंड नाउ हैविंग एज इफ टॉक टू हिस्स ओन सोल एक्टिंग विथ टू लेवल्स यू आर टॉकिंग एंड द सोल इज बींग कंग्रेचुलेटेड बट नाउ ही स्टेप्स अप दैट डुअलिटी हैज गॉन now he says i have bloomed into the fullness of the self i have attained nirvana i have vanquished ignorance and its effects i have become the innermost self adoration san to me <laughs> who are brahman the absolute adoration san to me who am ever free from birth death and all miseries of the world and who am ever immersed in supreme bliss i am satchidananda absolute existence absolute awareness absolute bliss now in the succeeding sections 37 to 39 the scripture brings out in a amazing in a artistic way to understand that when you are enlightened and you have realized i am nothing but brahman the absolute you should not fall into the trap of getting into a kind of trance where whole body becomes a, just a static that's in the practice of samadhi that's the way your body is placed but what's being brought out it is not that feature of your attainment that means enlightenment someone is enlightened and he is running around say how can he be enlightened and here is a yogi that has not gotten up for a few days <laughs> bears don't get up for 6 months <laughs> <laughs> they are called yogis <laughs> now cut the story short <laughs> enlightenment should not be viewed as becoming static in body and mind enlightenment has to be viewed as if you have blossomed it must express waft its fragrance vasantavat loke hite charanta you have attained enlightenment you have brought a spring season and if if you have brought a spring season it's going to create tremendous inspiration enrichment progress all around you automatically you don't have to go after it with detail your goodness never remains a selfish attainment it touches the heart of men not a single wave can rise unless many other waves are lifted up that point lord vishnu brings Sage Vasishtha continued, "O Rama, King Prahlad continued to reflect upon the nature of the self until he passed into nirvikalp samadhi. He became like a painted picture and remained immersed in this state for a very long time. This is dramatization. If he had attained that enlightenment, he wouldn't have done that. But this is to show to." aspirants to make them understand 
that enlightenment doesn't mean you simply stay stuck in one position. And Lord Vishnu now comes to help Prasad not to stay in a in one position like a painted picture, but continue to perform his duties as a king without losing that awareness, I am Brahma. And rather understanding the world you are working with is Brahman. So Brahman is not only you have found internally the source of your senses, the source of your mind, the source of your ego. But Brahman is behind all objects of the world. Any object has names and forms. And behind the names and forms, Brahman is the reality behind all. This you have to figure it out. Simple way to understand, if you are a student of mathematics, when you describe any object, existence is the common denominator. I'm suffering from pain. Pain is. Now I'm happy. Oh, happiness is. I have found my pen. This is presence. I've lost my pen. <laughs> that also is, is an expression of your experience. Your experience is reality. That isness. All things you are gaining, they are shifting. But something is not moving away. The awareness, existence behind them. This is existence in itself. Even if we negate the whole world, I don't believe in God. You are not negating your, the, yourself, the non-believer. You can doubt the whole world, but you can't doubt the doubter. So something that can, you cannot efface, that is Brahman. Brahman is Sat. And Sat, to understand more perfectly, it is awareness. And complete awareness is absolute joy. Sat, Chit, Ananda, these are just synonyms. And that's what you are. Because you are the one who created the problem. What am I to do? This is a miserable world. <laughs> it is through the human mind that all these scriptures are important. <laughs> and the same book source that wants the solution is the answer to the problem. <laughs> you want to be enlightened? You are the one to discover who am I. And it's not only for your own internal liberation, but it is, from practical point of view, inspiration for the entire world. And with this I will conclude. Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukmva Bandhanan Vrityor Mukshyamam Ritat Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashtidukabhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Om Omahim Saraswat Yainama Om Dum Durga Yainama Om Shim Mahalakshmi Yainama Om Shanti Shanti